Welcome back to DAPRA's Milling Training video series, where we introduce important concepts for milling that will help you achieve the best performance from your cutting tools. Now to be successful with your milling tool, the right grade of carbide, as well as the correct cutting edge type, must be selected from your cutting tool manufacturer's options. This video will address choosing the right cutting edge for the material being machined. Now recall from our last video the four main types of cutting edges. A T or K land, a neutral land, a honed edge, and an upsharp edge. In this lesson, let's take a look at which edge makes the most sense for various material groups. From previous videos, we learned that there are six primary material groups for machining. Standard, non-heat treated steel, hardened steel, stainless steel, cast iron, exotics, and non-ferrous. Now since these materials have very different properties, it only makes sense that they would respond better to specific types of cutting edges. In general, stronger cutting edges are appropriate in steel, hardened steel, and iron, where strength is key and optimum feed rates are possible. For these materials, the stronger cutting edges will provide better wear and shock resistance versus a sharper edge. It should be noted, however, that the stronger cutting edges tend to create more noise, spindle load, and burr. Sharper edges are typically the go-to for stainless steels and exotics, where temperature in the cutting zone is higher. The use of a sharper edge prevents work hardening and built-up edge in these materials. Now, since the edge is sharper, it will create less noise, spindle load, and burr, making it also a good choice for soft steels, especially on lighter duty machine tools. But since the edge is also weaker, it will have less shock resistance against chipping and will generally wear back more quickly than a T-landed edge. Use an upsharp edge for non-ferrous applications in aluminum, wood, plastics, and similar materials. Here is a quick summary page for future use. We'll include a link below so that you can print this page for reference. Again, use the stronger edges for the stronger materials, use the sharper edges for the softer materials, or where the high shear cutting edge is necessary for reducing heat or tool pressure. Note that the neutral edge is the most versatile, suitable for a variety of materials and applications, and producing a middle of the road amount of pressure and burr. It's also a very good first choice for job shops to use as an all-around cutting tool. Looking at the cutting edge comparison a bit differently, in terms of characteristics versus material groups, you'll see that the stronger cutting edge has the advantage where the most aggressive parameters are desired while machining steel. Now this is especially true on 50 taper spindles where horsepower and rigidity are in abundance. The stronger edge also has the advantage when using shorter tool lengths or when machining especially hard or abrasive materials. When using this stronger edge though, expect more noise, higher spindle loads, and greater tool pressure and heat. Now conversely, using a sharper edge will create a quieter, smoother cut, generating less heat and burr, while possibly still providing good material removal rates on lighter duty machines. The sharper edge can also have an advantage in long reach milling tools where tool pressure creates deflection. Remember though to stay more conservative on chip loads or feed per tooth to avoid overstressing the cutting edge which could lead to chipping. The sharper edge will also break down more quickly on abrasive materials so tool life in cast iron won't generally match that of a T-landed cutting edge. In our next video we'll look at how to calculate the right speeds and feeds for your cutting tool based on manufacturer's recommendations. See you soon.